Anjali Bamani, yes. and you are watching Rob Nard and Friends, the only place that I know on the internet where you can play D&D &D oh, with a yes. butt trumpet. Thank you, Anjali, and hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome to apparently the Amish Grognard and Friends Meeting House episode. And a very special welcome to our friends in Argentina. And speak of the friends, let's check out this week's episode of Grognard and Friends. Everybody, welcome this evening. When last we left the friends, Viv and Reed met the mysterious person from the Green Hag's window seat who was named Malicious. They shared some of their experiences with the rest of the friends, which created more questions than it answered. The group had been busy planning to break Butterbeer out of prison, which seemed to be, I don't know, their fault they then went to go to the hairy lemon to plan on getting butterbeer out and start the whole jailbreak but along the way they found themselves or reed actually discovered that they were being followed by some halflings and if any of you have been watching for any amount of time you realize that there is a guild of halflings in seven rivers that seems very interested in our friends and seems to have a, a, an interest in getting very close and getting their hands on at least one of our friends. So Sneaksy Reed, hobbits. Sneaksy hobbits. So our good hobbit friend Reed decided to hang back. The rest of the group went on to the hairy lemon, only to realize that Reed still wasn't with them. So while the rest of the group went to go into the Hairy Lemon, Gaius and Viv headed back in search of Reed. You have found yourselves alone on the docks, the three of you standing about outside the Hairy Lemon, as Gaius and Viv, which you could swear that they were kind of muttering under their breath some things that were quite colorful at times about about your good friend Reed and headed off <laughs> around the corner and away. God, I hope they don't do anything stupid. <laughs> Eldred says, you're talking about our friends, right? Yeah, yeah too late. Need... Okay, I hope they don't do anything stupider. <laughs> Fair enough. A so, limit, there's like a stupid cat. Now, Eldred, you suggested before that we kind of hold down and wait inside to kind of let, was it to let our contact know that a couple of our group members have fallen behind? I thought it was kind of to make our presence known to the barkeep, even if it's just so they sees us. I don't know if he would recognize us. I know he would recognize Gaius. Just if he seems to be looking around or something, maybe one of us can go and say something to him. Or even if it's just to kind of let him know that uh, we're friends of Murph and we're meeting our friend Gaius here in a little bit. Just wanted to give you the heads up and can we get a drink? Right. We don't want him to think that <clears throat> we're just not, that Gaius isn't going to show <laughs> since we coordinated that. Yeah, we, yeah. we kind of hope he does show at this point. Yeah, can we like not keep like getting smaller and smaller? <laughs> yeah. Elder, Elder uh, tries to stand up a little taller and go, sure. Wow, did you get taller? Holy crap. Well, just uh, trying to, you know, wear my lifts. I think you're wearing oh my platforms. God. Those two, <laughs> the ones with the little fish in the in the soles, I I left at home. Oh, so stylish. Okay, 
go drink. Ah, I like the way you think. <laughs> I'll go let Crouch know who we are. Okay. Okay. So you walk into the Hairy Lemon. It is evening. <laughs> Calandra just starts jiggling and laughing to herself as you walk in. You and Elder just kind of look at her like, <sighs> okay. It's never going to stop being funny. <laughs> So you walk in. Let's get y'all drunk enough to handle me. Because that always what goes well with a job with this group. <laughs> so you walk in. It is kind of busy. There's. <laughs> it's evening. It's on the docks. There are a lot of sailors. There seems to be a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking, a lot of whatever other stuff is. Uh, there is a haze of like bluish gray smoke in the air that. Uh, Bud Trumba, you don't have to worry about. And matter of fact, Calandra, you don't really have to worry about either. But Eldred... <laughs> We're right below it. Yeah. <laughs> Eldred just keeps kind of going... <laughs> <laughs> How are those lips working out for you? <laughs> hey. You looking for a table or are you looking to stand somewhere? What are you looking to do? I am focusing on the bar. How is the bar where Crouch is specifically? Like, I know the whole place is busy, but how about his particular station? The bar is probably about three deep, and there seem to be two to three bartenders going, and it's not even that big of a bar, actually. Okay. Do we see Crouch, though? He's there? Is Crouch he's one there? of, you can see, because he's tall and thin. So you can oh, nice see uh, his head kind of up above the people sitting on stools and the people standing. I'll make my way over there. Do you need me to come give you a toss? <laughs> throw you over onto the bar. Actually, you know, if anyone, yeah, if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving a little hip. Yeah. Just give me a little yeah. boost. Yeah. Cute. What are friends for? <laughs> Okay, the two of you kind of squirm in amongst some legs and stuff, and all of a sudden you hear a little, whoa, oh, hey, oh, wow. <laughs> Terry, um, you're welcome. Me, excuse me. No, no problem, little, little person. You can hey. buy me a drink later. Excuse me. <laughs> Reaches down, grabs you under the arms, butt trumpet, and places you on the bar. Woo! Thank you. Turns around, looks to you, Calander goes, and then thinks, seems to think better of it and goes... Um, may I offer you my seat? Oh, you're too kind. Sure. I'll and, only need it for a minute. And gets up, mm -hmm. moves the seat over, and seems to be a tall human type who, uh, kind of beefy, definitely looks, <laughs> uh, has a red and white spotted handkerchief on their, on their head. Goatee, big, one big gold hoop earring in one ear, and seems to be wearing a leather vest. And that's it. Damn, he's either just my type or he's hella gay. Fuck. Both. That that actually tracks. That 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 would make perfect sense. There there is like a a common drone throughout the entire room of conversation. And and the guy turns to you, Calandra, and says, "What was that?" Oh, I'm sorry. No, we we're here to. I'm just talking to my friend. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It, Totally fine. Just discussing what we should get to drink here. Do you have any recommendations? Oh, yeah. The um, the grog is good. It's not like actual ship grog. It's actually, it's like a like a drink drink. The lemon, lemon <laughs> squeezins are good. Mm -hmm. Is good. The, the beers are, the beers are good. They have Ankmar Strong, if you like that. Oh, um, nice. That's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, I think I'll get us a couple of those. Thank you. No problem. And which uh, uh, bartender makes its way over to us? A short, stocky, round guy has his hair that's all gray pulled back into a ponytail. Uh, kind of some jowls going on. Uh, eyes are a little watery. Big bags underneath them. Big tuft of hair coming out of the top of the undershirt. Uh, he's not dressed anywhere near as professionally as as uh, Mr. Crouch's that you see down the other end of the bar. Mm -hmm. But he also looks like he might have just come out of the back kitchen because he's got a few stains on him that uh, look like kitchen stains. Either that or he's a real messy eater. 
Hey, friend, how you doing? Yeah, I'm getting pretty good. What, what can I get you? A couple of Ankhmar Strongs. And I know you're busy. When you can, if you could have Crouch, come find me. You can refer to me as the little blue thing if you want. That makes that easy. Sure thing. Thank Both you. coming right up. Thank you. Walks down to where the pumps are, starts pulling a couple tankards, leans over, and you see Crouch lean over and whispers, says something to him that you can't make out. Crouch kind of looks down at the end of the bar, looks at him and nods, takes the two mugs from him, comes down, puts them in front of you, says, that'll be a silver, please. I, I got it. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. I was like, I've got it if you don't. Yeah, I'll get it. Yeah. I'll, two silver. Okay. And we're friends of Murph. We're waiting for Gaius, just so you know. Good to know. I know you're busy, so you continue what you need to, but we're just waiting for the rest. Just wanted to let you know, though, that he is on the way. <laughs> Looks at you, Bud Trumpet, and just nods, gives a little finger point, and says... I like you. You know how to make things work fast. Now, if you'll excuse me. Turns around and goes back. One of the things you notice about Crouch is he doesn't move fast, but he also moves very fluid and smooth. It's not like he's lounging. It just seems that he makes every little move count, and mm -hmm. none of them appear to be rushed. Ooh, interesting. And his we... face always seems to kind of keep that same expression of I'm incredibly bored or uninterested in anything you might possibly have to say. Mood. We will take our drinks uh, to back over to find Eldred. Okay, you stand yourself up and the, uh, the gentleman who put you up there said, Do you need help getting down, little friend? You know, I'd appreciate it. It would um, help me spare a spillage on the floor. And we do not want to waste drinks, so I fully understand. Takes you and says, may I? You may. Thank you. You have my consent. <laughs> Picks you up, puts you down, and says, uh, does the little lady need help from her stool, or do you have that covered? I would love it, please. With the, with the beer, yes, please. <laughs> Takes you, lifts you down, puts you next to Buck Trumpet, and then re, uh, takes his spot once more upon the stool and says, you two have a lovely evening. And you do the same. Oh, thank you. I'm hoping to. Is Eldred in the same spot he was? Yep, just kind of standing there looking around, looking very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I hand him my beer and go, here you go, bud. I didn't really you feel like drinking. You sure? Yeah, it was the best way to get the bartender over. Go for it. Oh, thank you. <sighs> and it <laughs> seems to down half of it in, like, his first swing. Crouch knows wow. we're waiting for Gaius and that we're friends of Murph, so might as well just find a place to sit that's uh, not too out of the way. Okay. If we can find one. You're there for about 15 minutes, and you see, you see a group of very strong athletic looking women um, oh. Oh. with tattoos oh. and piercings oh. all over some of them are wear a pair wearing like all mo modes of what look sort of stuff that you saw back at the blood circus a little bit from some people oh. who were fighting mm -hmm. and such uh but yet also they give a feel that they they probably came off a ship and the the <laughs> The four of them get up, toss a couple gold pieces on the table, and leave. Both of you give me, either both of you or one of you with uh, advantage, give me a perception check, please. I'm going to need hella advantage, so we're going to see how that goes. Dang it. Oh boy, a big old eight. Oh, 18. Okay. Uh, Calandra, you notice that one of the people at one of the tables nearby leans, does the fake yawn thing, and scoops up those gold pieces, and then gets up and walks into the crowd as <laughs> buddies seem to stay seated at the table. Oh, that the women put on the table? Are they gone? 
Yeah. Did they leave all bastards? They're assholes, but I'm also tiny and squishy and not trying to start a <laughs> fuck. I'm gonna go clean the table. Okay. I'm starting shit with you, but I see you. <laughs> clean, clean, clean. We have a table next to okay. some assholes. It, the crowd. Uh, some of the people. Some of the people here look a little rough, a little ragged. Yeah. Uh, there, there is a slight smell to the room of the mass unwashed <laughs> um, <laughs> that's been General in salty talk. air for a long time. I mean, you're not smelling urine or anything like that, but there is a certain, the air does have a certain, we'll say, patina. It's, but you're used to this down at the docks, especially since the, the city was shut down because the sailors have nowhere to go. While you're sitting there, is there anything else you want to do? I think uh, Calandra's good. She's probably just nursing her beer, um, making sure butt trumpet's good. And yeah, that's about it. Eldred, have yes? we... Sorry. Have we gone over my doll before? Uh, I don't think so. We, we identified it. Didn't come up anything specific, really. It was kind of weird. It was magic, but it just wasn't revealing anything about the type of magic or what it does or anything like that. That's what I was afraid of. I just hope that we can figure out a way to help it. Maybe once we do this, I'll go to the university or to that guy in, who invited me to his house. God, that sounds kind of creepy, doesn't it? And see if maybe they know it. Anybody there knows anything. Take me with you. I want to be able to learn as much as I can. Plus, I, it couldn't hurt to brush myself up a little bit on my skills. And it couldn't hurt to have a friend along just to watch each other's back and to make sure, you know, I don't have anything nasty happen to me. That too. Yeah. Especially being that that guy had that really bone-chilling monkey with him. What now? Remember when we were at the at the palace? And we met that. Oh, right. The monkey. Yeah. That thing just. Ugh, Tell Calandra about that. That sounds like that was before me. <laughs> oh, my God. Kind of Ming the Merciless looking guy. Uh, some sort of big grand wizard sort of guy. Shadwell Karn, I think his name was. Uh, mm -hmm. Seemed to have a pet or a familiar that was a mandrel thing was the size of a cross between a mastiff and a gorilla somewhere in there sat on the ground like a gorilla had this a head that was bigger than gaius's and that's a big wow head. it's a big head. yeah <laughs> no and the whole front of it was striped white and red and blue Big, flat, red nose. Big teeth. Like, big fangs at, at the top and bottom. Big yellow teeth. And a bright red ass on it that just seemed to almost glow. And <laughs> the thing did not seem to have a good attitude at all. And that was his little pet. It, it, you've seen the people in the Overlook, the wealthy women walking around with their little little yippy dogs right that right, was right, this right. guy's version of that and let me tell you there was nothing yippy about it what is wrong with that guy <laughs> right i rest my case and he wants you well he thinks he, he thinks he can help me to learn which i'm sure he can because it seems like well, Quaid at the palace who is the baron's advisor seems to be incredibly Seems to be an incredibly powerful wizard, if for no other reason than the vibe he gives off. I've never actually seen him do any magic, but I would imagine if you're the Baron's advisor, you're you're not doing party tricks. You know what I mean? Right. And he was very reverential towards this Shadwell Karn guy. Shadwell Karn seemed to be under some female wizard who she didn't have a mandrel but she had this kind of greasy long-haired long black-haired woman with 
a deathly pallor that just looked like she could haunt a house. That that was her valet, I think. They were like the gruesome twosome, that those two. I, <laughs> I, I, I've I been putting off going and meeting this guy because of that, but this is like the third time I've been told to go meet him, and I have a feeling if I don't, that's, that might not bode well. So. Yeah, I think you're kind of running out of options. Yeah. Oh, they don't seem, that doesn't seem on the level. Sorry I'm late. I left my mandrel in my other pants. Oh, mm-hmm. by the way, Butt Trumpet, uh, what are you drinking in case someone comes around? I can get us both another round. Oh, I'm not drinking anything. I, frankly, in the fact that there's a very distinct possibility that I could be gobnapped again, I'd like to have my wits about me. I'd at least like to know I put up a fight uh... and not just vomit because I have no tolerance as I refuse to admit often. Well, would you like something non-alcoholic if I can get it for you? Mm. Mm. Well, if they've got anything lemony that's not alcoholic that they can spare. You got it. Though, granted, I'm not sure if anyone's going to come around. I haven't really seen anyone. Although, I don't know that the people working here necessarily look like they work here, right? It seems a very, other than that Mr. Crouch you talked to, all the people we've seen working here seem to have a very relaxed work attire sort of standard. Yeah, it's a very we're all family here type of thing, but more in like a Uncle Ted who lives in the basement sort of family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought I took casual Friday to extremes. Yeah, if Uncle Ugh. Ted was, you know, had made was there because he made parole. Things aren't going so well for Uncle Ted. God, I hope they're okay. You hear behind you, butt trumpet. Can I get you anything? Anything lemony that's not alcoholic. You got it. Virgin lemon squeezins. You got it. Perfect. How about Thank you, you. Old lady? Yeah, I'll just have another Aunt Mar Strong. Me too, please. And uh, something to eat for the table. You got oh, yeah, it. If you sure. need anything else, yeah. my name's Bertha. Thanks, Bertha. No problem. Bertha you, is Bertha. quite large. Quite short, had her, has some big ass chunky earrings that look kind of like painted cannonballs, possibly. And has a real heavy hand with the makeup going. And I love her. (laughs) Yeah. Amazing, yes. Somewhere between a three-year-old's coloring book and uh, the local circus sort of thing going. Oh my god. Um, I'm here for it. We work with what we got. This is true, but uh, covered in tattoos, dressed exceedingly casual, uh, stains all over her, too. Eldred goes, you know, come to think of it, the food stains on the clothing seems to be part of the uniform, or else it's just a major coincidence. I don't know. You know what? That shows they're putting in effort. Or they're really hungry. I don't know. We're going to stick with the effort. And I'm going to stick with they are hard workers. I'm not judging their outfits because the food here is fantastic. Is there anything else you'd like to do while you're here? I wouldn't feel comfortable doing anything until everyone else gets here. That's a problem. Okay, so you don't, you're just going to wait till somebody shows back up? Unless anything that we, that definitely warrants our attention because if we get thrown out of here, we fucked everybody right. else. So, Reed, you have walked in further. You see the children ahead of you at kind of a cross piece of these two paths by these pools that are kind of glowing green and just seem to have a radiance coming from underneath. The cavern you're in is huge. It's like this each each set of two pools is similar to an airplane hangar. And Ooh. there are a lot of pools. So th- this cavern is the equivalent of maybe 20 airplane hangars. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's two airplane hangars worth on either side of you. And then like four airplane hangers in front of you and you're just at the first set of pools you're kind of part way towards the intersection between the first and second pool 
in front of you. And in front of you, you can see these, the closer you've gone, you get a little bit of a better view of these children. They are small. They are incredibly pale. They look to have just come out of the water because they have kind of a, a sheen to them that the light seems to be uh, reflecting off of the this wet sheen on them. And their eyes are a little funny looking. A number of places, these lobster slash crayfish type things that are kind of like a, almost like a metallic greenish gray. There are each ones between seven and nine feet long, roughly. They've got pretty big pinchers, but the thing that catches your attention are all these pink tentacles that seem to be coming out of their face, like where their mm. mouth and nose might be. And they just seem to be kind of going like this and sniffing about almost and kind of tasting the air. Okay. So I think they're like, you said they were on either side of me? Uh, Well, there's like two in front of you. Okay. One on either side, like on the edge of the pools. And there are more okay. around the children. And you are feeling, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to be. And okay. the person's looking to take care of me. They want they want to help me be a hero. And this okay. is where I'm supposed to be. It's a little strange. But these, I mean, they have all these children right, here. It can't be a bad thing. Yeah. I'll start walking towards the the kids and i i call out like who who's able to talk to me vivaldo so where we left you you and gaius mm -hmm. had started walking down the spiral staircase that had then straightened out and gone pretty steep at the bottom there was an arch and mm -hmm. it glowed pretty brightly inside this kind of greenish blue mostly green but there's like some yellowish blue tinges to it and where we left you you could see kind of just at the top of the arch you could see uh what look what you think is reed from like the waist down you just see him because you're at such an angle you can see him kind of walking up ahead away from you and you, the last thing you see are is from him from the waist down, and then he just kind of disappears as he's walking forward. You would have to go all the way down the stairs to uh, to be able to see see him completely. Okay, I da quickly dart down the stairs just to make sure it is him. Keeping to like the edge of the wall or archway, that way I have some cover. Gaius follows down. And you see, you see him up ahead, and he is walking now. Give me a perception check, please. There you go. What did I get? I didn't see for some you reason. Got like a him. three. Oh, okay. <laughs> but with with your pluses, it came out to seven. So okay. what I'm going to say is this: what you see before you through the arch is a huge cavern. It is the path ahead of you continues on on either side of it are pools of this water, large pools. Uh, each pool is probably the size of, to put it in perspective, like two airline hangars. And there are a number of them. So there's probably about, in this cavern, probably about 20 pools. You see probably four to the right and four to the left deep they go, and then just on into the darkness. You, and you just see the glow from this green water coming up. And straight ahead, you see Reed standing in the middle of this path of stone. It's just like gravel and stone, like these pools have just been cut in. And past him, you see quite a few what look like small children. They look to be wearing white. They look to... Uh, their hair seems to be... Uh, could be blondish, could be a little on the whitish side. They look very pale. They look to have come out of one of the pools because they, the water just seems to be reflecting off of them. You see a number of figures climbing up out of the pools around them that uh, you can't really tell much because they, 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 the water, the light from the water seems to be reflecting off of them as well. But they are obviously much bigger than the children. 
Like they could be how, human size. They you're not it's unsure. How far away is Reed from us? Maybe uh, about a hundred feet away from you. Gaius, do do we just go get him? Do we disturb whatever that ritual is? Gaius says, I don't know. I mean, this could be an opportunity to get I mean, those children might be the missing children. I mean, I think uh, why else possibly. would there be children down here? Then I would run to go catch up with Reed. So we'll say you get to there and, and during the time of going there do you do anything definitely like getting ready for some combat i think i think she takes out her shield just in case what do you do vivalda once you get up towards them you're about 15 feet away from them i'd say just go read 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 <laughs> read so in the in the <laughs> background you hear it's like it, you're in a dream and you it's like someone might be calling you kind of look at the ceiling <laughs> behind you um, behind, right. I'll, I'll look behind me if i hear that <laughs> and there is volvolda not too far away from you volvolda what are you doing here can i what? catch up to him why yeah i not moving forward <laughs> if i was what are you doing here what are you doing here uh i think I think I'm supposed to save these children, maybe? I'm a little okay. confused. I heard them calling. Well, you shouldn't have you shouldn't have come here alone. I heard them calling. I didn't I don't I let let's get them and get out of here. <laughs> okay, okay. Vivalda, give What's me another the plan? Give me another perception <laughs> check, please. Okay. Vivalda. Do I see guys? He's not with Vivalda. Oh. Bro. Uh, did you did you hear anybody calling you? No, we came looking for you. Vivalda, you see back just about 20 feet away from the arc, you see Gaius standing there, mouth open, hands just to the sides. He's dragging his shield on the ground, just kind of standing there with his head like this. What is going on? And Gaius! Now you notice that climbing up out of the pools are these creatures that you you saw these figures before but now you're getting a better look at them they look they're a little bit like a grayish green almost metallic looking lobster or crayfish kind of a dullish color but the green from the pools is reflecting off of their carapace but the thing that you're noticing most of all is where the mouth and nose of a creature would be are these long pink tentacles, tendrils that just kind of are feeling the air out in front of them. There are a number of them surrounding the children and they all, a number of them seem to have their attention. They're just keeping their place, looking, looking at you. Come, come, come to me, come to me. And she's just going to beckon the kids to her and she's going to grab Reed and I say, go to I say, they, they, they want us to go to them. I'm Why? There. I, no, no, there's them. so many. We, I don't know what those monsters are. We can't take them all. We need to rescue the kids, but why aren't, are they, are they moving? Yes. I think they're protecting the kids. That's probably how they survived down here. Can I kind of like incite the situation of what's going on with the kids and these monsters? Sure. Roll me Would an insight Would that be insight? Check. Yeah. Okay. They're going to help us too. They're going to help us. 14. 14? Get Butterbeer out. <laughs> The, Does it look like the kids are being threatened by the monsters, or are they, like, working with the monsters? The kids, they are wearing white. It's just soaked to their skin. Their skin and everything is just glistening. And you, you think they might be wearing gray or white or something like that, but they're just kind of, there's a, a water-like sheen over all of them. And their eyes are a little on the cloudy side. Uh, their hair has kind of gone like a, not quite platinum blonde, but it's kind of a grayish, whitish blonde. And it's all wet and stuck to them. And they just seem to be standing there looking at you. And these creatures have come up and seem to have kind of circled by them. And it's about this time that you see Gaius walk past you slowly. Gaius? 
And he's Oof. just kind of mouth open, just slowly walking forward. Oof, Guys, where with, are you going? I try, to, I try to catch up to him. I am Unless holding on to it so yeah, hard. She's <laughs> You kind of understand how Gaius is feeling there, Reed, because you... They you must be talking of... to him, too. They're talking to us in what our What are they saying to you? They're, they're going to help They're gonna help us with, you know... With what? Gaius be... continues moving forward. Do you move with him, Reed? Yeah, I'm going to go... I've... I'm going to grab yeah. him. <laughs> as, long, as long as Viv has let me. I'm, I'm kind of trying to take Viv with me. <laughs> we should go with Gaius. I'm gonna they're going to help. Pull they're going to help us back. be... They're going to help us be heroes. I'm going to try and grab Gaius and pull him back. Okay, he doesn't pull back, but he does stop. We should go. I don't like this. We should... They aren't... No that one's one, listening. That one, that one creature that's really close to us, I just kind of hold out a hand to it like, Hey. No, <laughs> like, no, 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 actually, no, no, no. Everybody come back. Let's go back. Okay, can, are we close enough to get a good look at these kids? Scared. Don't cut my hand off. Don't cut my hand off, Paul. <laughs> Does an 18 hit you? Me? Are you asking yeah. Reed or me? Reed. Yes. You reach your hand out, and one of the, the, the tendrils just kind of brushes across your hand there. Uh, make me a constitution saving throw, please. Ah. It's supposed to be my friend. <laughs> it felt like it was caressing your hand. And you're it's sure that it was only to trying to be friends. <laughs> uh, 11. You see Reed reach out and the thing just kind of seems to, some of the tendrils seem to just caress his hand. And then you notice that Reed has his hand out and isn't moving anymore. It's Reed? just still. Can I pull him out? You can pull him and he just kind of leans back. As you do that. Is he completely, like, paralyzed? Yeah. I grab guys and I'm just, I'm just gonna take them and just drag them as much as I can and book it out. Okay. You can put Reed under your arm. Gaius <laughs> wants to move forward. No. No. Gaius, we have a mission. We have a mission. Remember, we ought to go. They seem to be moving to the side for Gaius and Gaius is just going... The children. We can get them later. We have to go. The children. And I, I keep trying to pull him and I just, I can't. Is that what's happening? Well, he's, he's a solid guy. And you've kind of got your hands full, one hand full, at least with Reed. Give me a persuasion check, please. Please, please, please. Fifteen. Versus a 12, that's good. Gaius's head turns to you and goes, Vivalda. We have a mission. We have to We have to go back. Our mission was to save the children. We can do that very soon, but we... Right now, Butterbeer. We need to go for Butterbeer, right? Butterbeer. Yes. Butterbeer. Butterbeer. Yes. Butter Let's go. Bear. We can get the others. Yes, we'll get the others, and we can come back here after. We will come Figure back. Figure this out. Yes. Okay. He said we All could right. help the children. We will come back to him. And he yes. starts moving. No, no, actually, no. We will get Butterbeer now, and the children right after. Because more, more hands the better, right? Let's go. Come on. Hands. Butterbeer. We will come back. Look, okay, Viv. Look at me, guys. Come on, look at me. Let's go. We're going. Oh, okay. We, we're we going. I'm gonna drag them both. Okay. Carrying Reed and just dragging Gaius out. As okay, fast as, as you're doing this, you're, you're kind of leading Gaius along, just maintaining eye contact, and he seems to be mm -hmm. good with that. And Reed just, if you, like, break the contact for a moment, you see... He, he, you have him under the arm, but his head is facing behind you, and you just see him kind of looking, going. I just hold on to him as long as I can hold him strongly. <laughs> it's a reed statue. I've been immortalized. Uh oh. <laughs> and you yeah. see a couple of these things before you, Vivalda. Yeah. 
Am I, can I see a way to get around them? Do they look like they're going to try and chase me? They're just kind of standing there. The feelers on their mouth are just kind of, kind of hoping that you, it looks like they're kind of just not reaching, but just if you were to get in to their reach, they would probably try to caress you. The, uh, the claws are kind of up in the air, just kind of periodically closing. Can I try to guide Gaius around them so that he doesn't touch them? Just roll me a 20-sider. We'll take it from there. No! Okay, two. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> you go to the one side, and they adjust and just seem okay. to be... They, they're not stepping into your way. They're just making it so that they're taking up a lot of the space. I rolled for Gaius, and Gaius is still looking at you while you're just kind of going back and forth, like you're leading him in, mm -hmm. trying to keep his attention, but also where you're going, and you got Reed under one arm. And Gaius mm -hmm. goes, tell him we will be back. I will bring We gotta friends. go now. No, he's not talking to you. Oh. Yes. I need to go and get my friends. Yes, I will bring them back. Yes, we will. And there's a pause. These two creatures kind of each step to the side and seem to make way for you to walk through. Uh, give me one more perception check, please, Vivalda. 17. Right next to the wall, right here. As you make it there you notice one of these lobster-type, metallic lobster-type creatures standing there watching you. They have in front of them, on the ground, looks like the body of a child. Face down, on the ground, and the whole back has been hollowed out, it looks like. I make sure nobody else is looking at me. Eyes on me! Eyes on me! And I just keep them going. Give me a survival check, please. 23. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and give me a second. You're the hero of Viv. You're the hero of Viv. <laughs> Thank God. A second one? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Dang it. Natural <laughs> <Yeah>, 20. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> it's a long way out of here because you, you have a paralyzed reed under one arm. And you're kind of pulling Gaius by his hands, keeping eye contact with him, making sure you don't trip on stairs or in the mud once you get up. You're able to kind of do it, get yourself back to the ladder, almost from muscle memory. Not so much from knowing where the turns were, but by doing it and in the mud especially, watching your own footprints as you go out. Do I, I'm still, I stay paralyzed this whole time? This whole time, you are still paralyzed. Oh boy. And, you were uh, this ladder with me. <laughs> oh my god. I think once I get to the ladder, I'm going to try talking to Gaius again. We'll, we'll speed things up. It takes a while, but you get okay. to the ladder. Gaius, um, how, how are you feeling? We are going to come back. Yes, the children definitely. Children will be waiting for us. That's great. Um, Gaius, I think it would be really great if you did that one spell on you and Reed that gets rid of the magic, the, the one that you did for the feathers, because I think there's some growing back. I think you should do the spell on you and Reed. Feathers? Yes, yeah, get rid of them. Dispel that magic again. No, they're not growing. That. Trust me, only I can see them. It, elf eyes. Elf eyes. You might wanna you might wanna just dispel the magic. Invisible feathers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Did Eldred do this? He might have. We should we're gonna go back and we're gonna talk to him about it. But you should dispel the magic first. I we will talk to Eldred. He can't yes. be casting invisible feathers. We yeah, that's, have to get really back messed up. for the children. Yeah. We've got so many things to do. Let's dispel the magic. Let's do that. And he kind of lifts up his hands and just kind of looks at him. D20. 
Do you remember how to dispel magic, guys? Okay, let's go talk to Eldred then. We're gonna go talk to Eldred. It's not okay that he put invisible feathers on you. Let's go talk to him. Let's go figure that out. He's a dick. Yeah, dick. yeah, here. You can go up the ladder first, since you did so well last time. Show us how it's done. Okay. Um, and I'll be holding Reed under my arm still, climbing up very slowly behind him. <laughs> it's very it takes, like, slow. What, an hour? <laughs> now, we'll say one hour later. Oh my gosh. You get to the top. <laughs> His arm's going to be killing her. <laughs> you, you get out. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything when you get out of this manhole? Just, I check the surroundings, see if anybody's been looking. No, it doesn't appear to be anybody around. If there is anything I can quickly grab to cover the manhole, there's a I'm manhole cover that. right nearby. Perfect. I'm putting that on. I'll set Reed down for a second, just look to make sure he's gonna not run away. Okay. And then just put the manhole cover over. I still got my arm out. His eyes are gonna dry out. <laughs> oh god. Okay. I just put him under my arm again and I'm like, all right, Reed. I mean, guys, all right, both of you. Let's um let's, let's You know go. what's gonna cure me? You're gonna have to stop and get bacon. <laughs> I'll just drag along Gaius okay. holding Reed all the way back it to It is um... slow going. Give me a perception check, please. This paralysis. Oh is no! Over an hour. Oh no. Okay. Natural one. No, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. Not an issue. The tinies have your two tinies. <laughs> Eldred, butt Trump, and Calandra. An hour goes by. Two hours go by. What the fuck? <sighs> Anything you're doing? Why? Why this time is going by? Eldred just keeps ordering drinks. <laughs> well, how about we take it easy on that thing? Back in yeah, the we can't here. carry you out of here. Like, I can't pick you up. Oh, I doubt that, says Eldred to you. Look at me. Look at you. Oh, you meant lift. <laughs> Don't be a dick, Eldred. I cannot, there is no one here, at, okay, uh, Gaius isn't here to uh, help your you out of here if you get too inebriated, so, yeah, like, I'm, if I'm we fine. were going to put it, <laughs> okay, and I've been as eating too, because Bertha brought you a large, a large platter that at first you think they're nachos, but then you realize it's like, Fried potatoes that are covered with cheese and onions oh and my peppers. God. And I'm a, this. Num a number of different I'm sauces. Missing. You're not <laughs> there, Reed. <laughs> Man, I bet Reed would love this plate of potatoes covered in deliciousness. But he he's so there's dumb even if he knew we were having this. It. While we're just like eating all this delicious food. Is there is there bacon on the potatoes? There, there's crumbled bacon, there bacon on there, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh poor Reed. I'm gonna and this eat this nice extra gooey cheese and oh cheese. Sour cream and you know, this wouldn't of... be any good by the time they get here. We should just finish this. No. Eldred says, Oh Stuff yeah. Like this that's... doesn't keep. It certainly like doesn't. doesn't keep. And between the three of us, I think we could probably do a good job on it. Now bet this, I can eat faster than I you. Can... Oh, I bet I You'd can eat faster than you, that... says Eldred. I can pack a surprising amount away. So uh Okay, bet. let show me. And so We've some more the, some more time goes <laughs> by. And at about three and three and a quarter hours later, okay, you is... see as you're just <laughs> finishing the last little crumbs off the platter. In walk Vivalda, you see little hobbit or halfling legs sticking out from under her arm. Behind her, just you see her kind of leading Gaius in, who's just kind of going. And what just kind of the follow. hell happened to what you? What the fuck happened? Eldred, Eldred do yeah. you know that, that spell to dispel magic? Um, Why does Reed, what the fuck is wrong with 
read? Do you know it? Magical people help. Do you know how to do this? Hold on. on. Hold on. Let me um, give me just a second. Sometimes I, I what do you what need I it did. for? I mean, I feel I stupid asking that, but these I don't know information is... Reed, is, is Reed touched a tentacle monster and now he's frozen and Gaius was looking at the tentacle monsters and he wanted to I don't know, it was just so much. Can I just and she's like actually having a panic attack right now. Yeah. I take one and of the beers so that has been ordered and I like move it over to Viv because I I'm gonna don't like usually, but maybe just in this one case. I can't, I can't, I can't. Okay, I just okay, I okay, kinda okay. I see I see you, Reed, I just kind of like but from pulling his use... hand. <laughs> but from but give me a perception check, please. My official diagnosis is Reed's fucked up. This is why you don't touch things. <laughs> we don't touch tentacles. God. You see a hand come by, grab the beer, and, and start drinking it. And it is not Viv's. Who's is it? It's Gaius's. Oh, okay. <sighs> That's right. probably good. That's probably good. Um, he Gaius. just seems to finish it, down it, and says, I'll buy next round. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> what was it we were going to you tell? You know, do we Eldred? need to spell him now, or...? Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Who? Yep, fair, fair. Why? We have to get those kids, don't we, Viv? Yes, we do. So we're going to get Dispel Magic, right? Why are we going to... Why do we need Dispel Magic? The Invisible Feathers, remember, guys? That's right. Yes. Don't be a dick, Eldred. But trumpet, like, what the? F what? I have what did, no what? idea. I can this explain. Is... I just, we just need, we just need them to not leave again. I just need them to be normal again. You see, Gaius okay. going, Eldred. We have kids to rescue. Why are you casting invisible feathers on people? Not cool, dude. <laughs> No, nope, not cool at all. So if you could dispel that, I'll handle him. Eldred's kind of going, Dad, uh, excuse me? Remember, Eldred. Eldred, you cast invisible feathers on, on Gaius? I kind of I kind of look at, I, I'm like, Gaius, or I, Eldred, 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 Eldred. <laughs> oh, Eldred's had too much to drink, Gaius. It's okay. He's He's sorry. Please just I, fix I've it. been drunk before. I haven't been that. I'm not so drunk as to what? Eldred, uh, let me. Let... You have something in your eye. I do. Can you come help me get it out? Is that one of those away lines from everyone? You... He smiles at you, Viv, and Butt Trumper says, "I might be gone for a little bit. I'll be right back." You're welcome. Oh my god! I just I sat. Just, I just back and like, you're up, welcome. Like leaned against the table. <laughs> I'm going to run an Arcana Reed check. Reed is just kind of leaning up against the table like. <laughs> I'm going to run an Arcana check on both of them just to see if I can, if I can at least detect the nature of whatever this is. <laughs> of course not. No because why would it work when I need it? Are there why any... would I ever be useful? Are there any pluses to that? Uh, that is with pluses. Oh. oh no. Yeah. Okay. Believe me, I want it to be better just as much as you do. <laughs> I don't like that that happened. What's your professional diagnosis, Petrofit? <laughs> I messed <laughs> up. Uh, they, they fucked up. Professional diagnosis. Quit touching tentacles. Damn. Let me poke it. Let me poke it. Let me po no, no pokey pokey. <clears throat> then what did you pull me over here for? We're not talking about you. We can negotiate that. Oh, more money. It doesn't uh, always have to be money. What? Okay. Calandra, <laughs> what <laughs> healing do you have? Because holy shit. <laughs> I um I don't let's see I have what do I have I have <laughs> somewhere uh, somewhere Butterbeer is mysteriously very disappointed. <laughs> right, and he doesn't he doesn't know why. <laughs> he just has this. He's already at a really low point right now. 
And yeah. he knows, he somehow knows that he's like, I don't know why, but I'm really <laughs> mad at Calandra right this very minute. Oh, he's mad at all of us. It's okay. <laughs> see, what do I have? Oh, God. Maybe, I maybe, have, maybe, not, like, maybe not Viv and Butch, but the rest of us are probably like, mad at us. Prayer of healing and lesser restoration. Do those try healing was, that's either of those, Sean? I will help. And if Eldrick can quit being a dick for five seconds. He'll help you too. Will he be a dick, Eldred? Health. <laughs> and then, but lesser restoration is, I mean, it. it's as far as like if they're poison, what, poison, blinded, paralyzed, or deafened. So if Does, this, this is... looks like paralyzed to me. I think okay, Reed is okay. quite paralyzed. I'll try it. I'll try it. Okay. I'll, try okay. it. I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. So I will, I will cast lesser restoration on on reed please hedoni let it fucking save my tiny dumb friend <laughs> we're gonna have a very long talk about why you don't touch no glove no love damn it <laughs> all of a sudden you see reed's love. arm kind of drop slowly and <sighs> As he was leaning up to the table, he just kind of stands and read your face is ah! about this close to an empty platter covered in um, kind of grease and little bits of cheese here and there. There's some potatoes there, there, and you can smell that there was there's bacon grease on that platter. I just kind of lower my head into the platter, ah, plop it on there. Ah. <laughs> Read, read. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I yeah. kind of like lick, lick some of the bacon grease. <laughs> okay, guys, it's getting uh, Can we get some more potatoes, please? Do you see a grease oh, slick across, guy, across Reed's face? This, <sighs> this man needs potatoes. Why is my Stat. arm so tired? <laughs> How are you uh, doing? You were doing this? Why was I doing that? <laughs> you apparently touched something you shouldn't. What does prayer do, I do? Do I remember all that, Paul? <laughs> you know that you're going to go back to that voice because that voice is obviously someone who wants to help you attain your goals. And the children are there, so maybe this voice has saved the children. So I, Those... I, I remember all that, though. Yeah. And, and do I remember everything I saw down there? Yeah. For the most part, you just figure those lobster things are probably just oh, workers the for the person who was talking to you. Yeah, they weren't hurting the children. They're good guys. Obviously. Yeah, no one was hurting anybody. <laughs> Bertha brings some more potatoes to the table. Mm, I'm sorry. Thank you, Bertha. Yeah, these look so good. Thank you. They're, uh, they, they, look, are they, so they look like fries. They, they, there's a little dish of ketchup next to them. Ooh, they look like steak fries. That? Tomato sauce. <laughs> now, do um, what does prayer of healing do? It restores. It just restores. Um, Up to yeah. six creatures of your choice yeah. that you can see within range each regain hit points equal to 2d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. I kind of, I kind of blank. Did we, mm, did we save the kids? Gaia says so we are going back. We are going back to save the yeah. children. There are Can kids. we please fix ah. Gaius? Are there kids? <laughs> there were the there were kids down. Yes. Yes, the... there were. And mm. I intend to go and fix it as soon as possible, but I just we need everybody's minds to be about what so happened to him. He just looked at this thing and went all like this. I don't like what? Does what anybody know how to fix Gaius? Eldred says it's it it's not magic not no what is it is it gaius <laughs> it it's gaius it just there's some obviously some influence going on but it's not magic per se it's not a spell or anything like that oh we we went has down he been like this the whole time a while yes give me one more perception check there viv 19. You notice that he seems to be coming back to himself a little bit. Like he's 
with you before he was super slow and just kind of catatonic almost now he's just seeming just groggy you know he's a little focused but it's like someone who woke up that wanted to keep sleeping who's still kind of not totally awake yet do you want some wine guys yeah that'll work and he takes out yeah. his and just starts drinking it okay <laughs> now carefully I'm as many and potatoes slowly, as I can with my left hand. carefully <laughs> and slowly walk us through what happened we all know reed ran off and um uh, i don't know I how much of that you off. remember okay I, you want to clarify i didn't run off i i I heard somebody needed help and and they were gonna they were gonna help us they they, they were gonna help me <laughs> they were gonna help us but um I figured we could use all the help we could get getting butterbeer out but I didn't know who was calling so I I kind of followed the voice and I told them I didn't have much time I had to hurry up and get back to help everyone save butterbeer but um I kind of guess I lost track of time. Something happened. And I ended up by those, by the kids with those creatures. But the creatures so, looked like they were maybe protecting the kids. Maybe they, they can't climb the ladder probably. So we probably got to help the kids get out of there. Um, when Reed went to go find the person who had been calling, um, Gaia sent a message to find out where he had gone. And I tracked him down and we came across um, a sewer. Um, that's why we smell like this. Um, and it, it wasn't it wasn't as horrible as the other sewer we went into. It was, uh, this one was filled with um, like some sort of glowing fungi or, or yeah. some sort. Um, it was like little and grassy things. Girl. We followed Reed's tracks, but there were additional smaller ones. And as we got Further down, we came across this um, stair stairwell and um, an archway. And when going into the archway, the archway was glowing a lot. It was it was a lot of glowing, and there were a bunch of children down there wearing what looked like maybe all white. Their hair was lack of color as well. Um, they must have come out of and, those pools because they were all like wet. Yeah, I guess they went into the pools. Um, there were pools. There were big, there were big pools, yeah. The, the water was glowing. Um, and there were these metallic, like, almost lobster-like giant creatures with tentacles. And I think Gaius was speaking with them. I, I don't know if we can fight them all to save the kids or not, but I know we, we need to try to save the kids. And she's just kind of, like, overwhelmed with thoughts and feelings right now. Okay, okay. But after after Butterbeer, then we'll, we'll save Butterbeer first. I think we have to do this first. I, I thought I heard you telling guys after Butterbeer. I just needed to get you guys out. I just needed to get you out because you guys weren't listening. How did I get out? I don't remember getting out. I, I grabbed <laughs> you. After you touched the, the monster, oh. you you were frozen. And um, I just I picked you up and I just grabbed you. Oh. Yikes. Could you Eldred climb that says, ladder with me? Eldred says, but Butterbeer might be executed any day. God. Yeah, and we have we have people waiting for us, which, by the way, why on earth are they not here? I just got here. We've been Never. waiting forever. <laughs> the key word is might be. If I understand, I hate but that's one heck of a risk to take. But there are so, several children down there. And not all of them are alive. Oh! Oh, you no. saw one that wasn't alive? I only saw the alive ones. I thought they were kind of safe where they were. But I'm scared uh, that if we go down there, people will not, um, I don't know, be like hypnotized. I don't know what happened. That's what's so terrifying is all of us, if we all went down there, if we all took this step, the very same thing could happen to all of us and we wouldn't be able to help each other or help anybody. I want those children okay as well. We just got to figure out a, a way to be able to do that without just adding to the pile. 
We want to do this right if we're going to. I agree with you. It's important. I want us to do it. But we wouldn't be helping anybody if we went without a plan. Is that fair? Yes. Yes, I understand. We do. Because I absolutely, we should go. We should go. And I would like to go, you know, sooner rather than later because it's children. But, so I agree with Evalda, but, but Trump, but yes, if we all go down there and end up in the same state as like Reed or even, you know, Gaius, and then there's that, then that's, that, that's it. We're not helping Butterbeer or these kids. We need some kind of... I feel okay. I feel okay. Do you okay. remember this the last entire... thing you like, the last thing you saw or... Was it just the voice? Because I never heard the voice. The, yeah. Yeah, the voice was... It was telling me to, to come closer that it was going to help me. I don't when know did you hear it? It had in mind. Uh, I was hearing it ever since I was in the alleyway where the sewer was. Gaius, do you remember when you started hearing a voice? Just when we entered that cavern. But we have to help Butterbeer. He's our friend. He's taking care of us. I want to help the children too, but we promised to help Butterbeer and he would have done the same for us. And do maybe you feel Butterbeer okay? might have some ideas on what we could do as well. Guys, how do you feel in turn? Do you feel like you can go over and talk to Crouch? Yeah. You Are you in your right mind to do that? I'm in my right mind. I'm just a little groggy, that's all, but I'll be fine. Will we be able I've to got, handle I've got tonight? All the, all the magic medicine I've got right here. He holds up his wine skin. Right. We need to figure out where the other people who are supposed to meet us are. You realize now for a while, it's just like, sometimes this just doesn't even phase you. But there's been a hand on your thigh for a little while now. Because it's kind of hey, squeezing, <laughs> squeezing and caressing you. And, Hi, Toad. And this hooded figure leans That's over weird. and goes, Hey there, sugar bumps. Oh. Okay, well that's one person to check out the list. Our toad's here. I didn't want. How to... long have you been here? A oh, while. Well, I've just been kind of watching you guys eat and waiting for the, all of you to get together. I didn't want to draw too much attention to myself. Yeah, we have. I moved the big plate of potatoes day. out of his way, <laughs> so it's like weak and like. <laughs> I make sure Vivaldi gets up if she wants. Toad goes. Oh, no worry, man. No worry. I, I'm good over here. And you see this heaping pile of uh, fried potatoes with cheese and tomatoes and bacon and all sorts of stuff all over it. And like a good chunk is out is been it's been worked on for a while, but he's continuing. Going, I'm good. Thanks. Was he at our table? We didn't notice him. He's at the table next to you. Oh, oh. <laughs> That happened. Okay. And the other dude's really well. We don't know for sure who was coming, who else was going to be sent. Gaia says they're going to meet us uh, when we get in the tunnels. Matter of fact, they're probably waiting there now because uh, what time is it? We're probably really late. We're very oh, late. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. We should probably, at the very least, start back. Eldred goes, initially sounds bad, but it might be for the best because by the time we, once we get there, it'll probably be after lights out. So the guards should be lessened. I that's think, isn't fair. that, isn't that what Mr. Finn said? That's, or, that's or a good someone point. said? That I think you're right. goes, that was me. I said that. Guys, do you have the strength to let them know that we are on our way? I'm thinking that we should probably just go down there and meet whoever they sent rather than me waste a spell because we don't know what I'm going to need. I've already That's... used quite a few spells and he looks at Reed more than I was expecting to. What? What? Me? Just gets up and goes talk to talk to Crouch without answering. I put my hand on Viv's shoulder and just with a way out of your shot of everybody open. else. <laughs> what are you climbing on right now? <laughs> the back it was of the meant chair. to be comforting. It was meant to be comforting. Thank didn't really think it through. Thank, thank you. Sorry, I just didn't expect you to just. You're usually down. You know, never mind. Thank you. I appreciate it. And what <laughs> makes it even worse is because Jack was on Butt Trumpet's shoulder. 
kind of hanging over and bouncing in front of your head now, looking at you upside down. Hi, Jack. Okay, well, at least we lifted your spirit a bit. Your, right. thing, your heart is in the right place, and you are correct. This is important, and it does deserve our attention, and we will Let's get do this it. done with, and then we can do that. All right. Shall we, everybody? Calandra leans over to uh, Reed. Calandra you had your over to Reed. Calandra leans over to Reed. And she's like, and, and just put your hands in your pockets when we go. Like, <clears throat> get, get a buddy's hand or something. Please, please. Well, we're going to carry the potatoes. Okay, you know what? That's great. No, you you, you are not way, taking you're... a doggy bag on a breakout mission. You know what? Wow. Let him take them for a little while because if he's holding them, he's not grabbing tentacles. <sighs> Toad, not a word. I didn't grab tentacles. I just I went to shake hands. It might be good too, honestly, if if for some reason we were to come across another thing, another voice, we could just kind of snap it in front of his nose, like, no, no, you want potato, you don't Follow want to go to the voice. Follow the yes. I'll accept that. Shall we? Okay. Guys, lead the way. Guys comes back and goes, okay. Follow me into the kitchen. Ooh, more food. And <clears throat> we do so. All right, okay. we do. Gaius leads you into the kitchen, to the back part of the kitchen, and says, um, "We're we're looking for toots." And you see a you see a a very large female ogre doing dishes. Looks back, looks looks all of you up and down, sees butt trumpet, sees Gaius. Goes, took you long enough. Jeez. You would Follow not me. believe the evening we've had. Ah, well, try cleaning up after these assholes. <laughs> okay, follow me. Takes you into a storeroom, shuts the door behind you, opens up a trap door, takes you down into a basement, goes to the back end of that, moves a barrel or two, opens up another trap door, and there's a very long, uh, there's a ladder that goes down. From there, she says, good luck. And you find yourself down here. I have like a, whatever was handy, I wrapped up as many as the potatoes as I could. Not I made myself a little baggy. So this is where you find yourself. So Viv, you, you carried me up that giant ladder that we had gone down? Yes. Yes. Oh, I didn't know you were so strong. <laughs> yeah, I am. I you should arm wrestle from... guys. One time Nikita did that was pretty funny. She pooped her pants. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm used to climbing trees and stuff, so ladders aren't hmm. hard. Where to from here? Guys said, I uh, guess we look around. I mean, do you want us to roll a perception check? Sure. Let's all do it. Someone's bound to roll well. It probably won't be me, but we can try. I got 11. I got a rock. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 7. I got a 7. Vivalda notices that upper right of the map there is a is a tunnel that leads out of this cavern you you drop down into. Do we have a light yes, that's here? I can cast Dancing Lights. We can okay. go up ahead. Gaius also casts light on his shield. Toad leans over to your calendar and goes, Tunnels after midnight. Isn't this romantic there, sugar bumps? I call back, nope. <laughs> Just see Reed turn around, no. You got my real dad. <laughs> Reed. <laughs> <laughs> How old is Reed? He looks like he's Mentally about... or biologically? Yeah. But chron he... chronologically, yeah, chronologically, how how many years has Reed walked upon this earth, not emotionally or mentally? He looks like he's between 10 and 12, but uh, according to Gaius, he's actually a grown man. And what, what is a what is an adult for a halfling, halfling ball? Well, the thing is, you're you're only half halfling. That's one of the things, oh. though, as you well know. I'm he's an mystery. easy buck 20. <laughs> I don't weigh that much. If you had to guess, give us a range. You um, do know your own age, right? <laughs> oh no! I never really got. Uh, I never really had birthdays. 
I kind of, I kind of, well, it, it's okay. I was, I was an orphan and I was with a bunch of other kids. I Did I tell you about hug. that before? That's so sad. Oh, well, I'm going to, um, okay. we're, we're going to have a birthday <laughs> party for you when we're done with this and I'm going to make you a cake. You're gonna have a birthday. Oh, okay. Well, we have Eldred. Eldred. Pick what age? <laughs> Eldred goes. Whatever age you want. Age yes. A birthday party thrown by Calandra. Oh. I just want to be there. <laughs> You're all invited. It's gonna be great. <laughs> anyway, um, so I can I can remember. Yet? I can probably remember more than a dozen or maybe almost twenty. Like winters, so probably I'm probably like twenty ish. I think I don't know. So, um, I don't know. Yes, the Velda was saying as we're going through the tunnels, yes. are we noticing anything? Are we hearing anything? Well, you go into the tunnel, and there, standing before you, you've seen this person before. Those of you who were at the blood circus, a figure known as the Gray Shadow. Ah. Oh. Gaius. <laughs> Gaius comes up and says, ah, I remember you from uh, the meeting. And, and the figure just kind of nods to him. Do you, do, do you speak, Mr. Shadow? Looks at you and... Will it let us pass? Okay. <laughs> Take that as a yes. Gaius goes, he's coming with us. Oh. Right, right. I need that. I need that. What a lovely ragtag Wizard of Oz crew we have. So you go up there, Volta, and the Gray Shadow puts up a finger and goes up. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> turns his head towards you, Reed, and goes. <laughs> reaches Sorry. into a pocket, takes out a ring of keys, and unlocks. Oh, the he's about to give me candy. Turns his head again, looks to you, butt trumpet, then looks at Reed and goes. <laughs> I gesture back and mouth like, I don't know. Anyway, unlocks three locks. And this area, this door opens up. That was some sort of huge secret door? No, it was it was a door that led to whatever the cavern was that had the ladder up into the hairy lemon. It looks like a pretty big, sturdy door, though. I mean, oh, it is. Is it like almost like the catacombs type thing? Like the big doors that are in the mountain to get to the uh, the catacombs? That kind of big door? Oh no, no, it's just no? a very okay. solid door. In other words, you're not necessarily going to be bashing this thing open. All right. Okay. It's a sturdy metal door. Okay, right. how much farther? I, I point to the door directly above us, and I look at the gray shadow, and I'm like, hmm? <laughs> He goes. So we don't oh, have the key to that okay. one. Reed, you want to try your hand at uh, seeing if you can pick it? Uh, I could try. Unless it's already unlocked. Would you be hilarious? Is, is this <laughs> the way we're supposed to go? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Do we know which way we're supposed to go? <laughs> you see two locks on here, Reed. So uh, give me a, uh, you know, go ahead and give me a roll to pick your lock. The first one, I get to re-roll because uh -oh. I am a halfling. <laughs> <Ooh. clears throat> 16. <laughs> okay. Uh, that one opens. You hear it click and it opens. The, the lock, you hear it click. But there's still another lock that there on the door you know. I, so give uh, me another roll. I eat a, I eat a potato, and then I go back to the second lock. Okay. Oh yeah, twenty three. Okay, and it opens. Boom! Oh. Yeah. I and Colin's just like, okay, let me get one of those potatoes. That's pretty good. Like, <laughs> damn. Whatever. These are success are. potatoes. <laughs> okay. Success potatoes. Yes. So when the door opens, what do we see? Blinded by the light. <laughs> Do we see it's a like big boulders in here. You see a table and you see a lot of stones. Looks like there might have been a little collapse in the far back there of stones, but you could probably climb through there if you needed to. But Toad goes, was this uh, part of the gig going through uh, collapse? 
I don't think so. Not that I was aware of. I, they said that everything should be in order, right? They didn't say whether or not anything about anything like this, just that uh, this would lead to where we needed to go. Judging on the way we came down here, do we know the like left or right basically goes towards the colony? You utilizing the map you have here, you would need to go up. You would you know to get back, you would need to go up. And to probably like a little Where? bit to the northwest eventually. Northeast eventually. But definitely I'll, up. I'll check behind these big rocks and stuff and just see if anybody stashed any equipment or anything around here real quick. Okay. Give me an investigation check, please, there, Reed. Well, we're supposed to be given a guide. Nineteen. Okay. I think the gray shadows are guide. I thought That's what I thought too. Do you want a potato? I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> they are good. They're all cheesy and bacony. They're a little bit of bacon flavor. They look delicious. <laughs> Reed, you uh you find there's a table that has some chairs around it over there. There looked to have been another table that was crushed by a giant boulder. Oh. And the passageway looks to have been totally filled with soil and rock from a collapse, and it's like spilled out into this cavern. No, it doesn't look like there's anything useful here. Unless guys want to use the chairs as weapons. Maybe, no? No? Okay. The guy says, I'm good. In the next bar, we'll, we'll talk. Oh boy. Yeah, we'll go. Can I do a general, like, perception check? Sure. I'll help if I can, or do one myself, too. Okay. Unnatural 20. What are you trying to perceive there? I'm just kind of getting a general layout of where I might be, because, like, I can see what's on the map, but I don't know how much you want Viv to see what's on the map, so I'm just kind of getting an idea right. of your surroundings. Well, to your north right now, it's kind of getting away from the main tunnels but there it is a passageway it's just going to be really tight getting in and you don't know how far in if it's going to open up if it's going to close off it doesn't look like a collapse but it's really tight gonna have to all guys, suck in guys, further south guys has been, guys has been doing his yoga so <laughs> do i hear anything uh give me a perception check please not as good as the other one. Twelve. You hear the sound of dripping water. And it's to it's like behind you, <laughs> down and to the east. There's the sound of dripping water down that path. But I do know we need to head north, so we should probably head into this tunnel, see where it leads. The skinny tunnel? Alright. Yes. We can squeeze okay. in. We you all wanna go in. I can bring up the the back end. I can double check if there's a way the through. So oh, I can get cool. through. And Somebody then... should go with you. I can make it. I'm tiny oh, enough. Okay. All right. I was not... I, I can go too. <laughs> okay, so guys, are some of you going guys to hang was very adamant. Guys was very adamant that we keep... Uh, that we have adventure buddies on these things. So. <laughs> <I> think, <laughs> yeah, so me and Butt Trumper are going to squeeze through and see how long it is. Okay. That way we're not all like stuck in one spot if it's too tight. We're just going to go in. It continues to be tight. Sometimes it gets a little tighter. Sometimes it opens up a little bit. But it, it's going for quite a ways. I think we could get a couple more people to come through. Maybe just one like time, one single two. file. Yeah. Before you go, the gray shadow taps you on the shoulder, Viv. Looks at you and goes... And down the path that goes south and heads off to the east. Okay, I think the gray shadow is telling me that they're going to go check it out, out down that way. Yes, okay. You eventually... Somebody maybe go with gray shadow? Look, looks at you, Reed, goes... Okay. Okay. Hey, okay. Yeah. 
I offer him a potato. <laughs> so, Mr. Shadow, are there, are there like dangers down here? Like weapons out? And Reed, this is what you come upon. You, there are some pools with some brackish water. And beyond that is uh, some water that doesn't look like it feels like there's, there's some flow there. And by the way, the measurement has been kind of off on some of some of these tunnels have been a lot longer than they actually appeared on here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so you've been in here for quite a while. You can see that there is to the north there. There's also a pool of really muddy, minerally smelling water. And past the one that, right next to Eldred? No, up above it, the the brownish this. Oh, okay. And beyond yep. that, it looks like there's a way around those stones just above it to the right along the water. But there's also another one of these narrow tunnels up to the left. Like it, it's very similar to what Vivalda went up when it where you just were. So I, motion, I just motioned to um to see if he wants to go back. Yeah. He, he actually okay. looks around, nods, and then heads back, and you wait for Vivalda to come back. How far do me and Butch have to get through there? Uh, you get in there probably a couple hundred yards, probably. It just kind of is winding back and forth between, you know, sometimes there's overhangs of stone. Sometimes you have to step up and kind of walk mm -hmm. through. This doesn't look like it was a constructed tunnel like most of the other stuff you've been through this okay. looks like it's not part of the regular tunnels and a lot of it is kind of natural i'm wondering if we're going the right way oh do you think we should go back if it if it's going for this long yeah i think so maybe let's this is, yeah, this is taking way too long. I thought um, I was going north, but I feel like I'm but, getting a little bit turned bound. But Trumpet and Vivalda, give me a one of you or one with advantage. Give me a survival check. You probably are better at that than me. I'll do it with advantage. Yeah. That is a 19. Okay. You know, Vivalda. That mm -hmm. where the prison is compared to where the hairy lemon is, there's a bit of distance. You've already gone through some tunnels that are longer than they appeared on these maps. You feel like you're getting vaguely close. You, you figure it's probably smart to check out what the gray shadow saw. This looks like it's a possibility. It's probably smart to see what was down that way, though. May, does it head north? If it just continues south, then no. But, mm -hmm. you know, talk to him. Talk. Find out what you know, from Reed, what was over there. You guys can make a decision from that. It was probably what you're thinking. Um, I'm going to shout out to see if they can still hear us through this. See if maybe they've returned yet. Okay. Reed, are you there? You're pretty far away, so... It doesn't echo at all? Oh, it echoes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it I echoes both directions. You you kind of hear it going both directions. Do I hear okay. it? Or no? Read a give me an investigation check with disadvantage, please. Nah. Five. You don't hear anything. Uh, I, hear I think we should go back. The potato I'm chewing. Yeah, right. It's wiggling out of here. Okay, we'll say you make it back. You both make it back without a problem. Huzzah! The whole group is back together. It was taking a really long time to go down that way. Did you get anything from south? Uh, there's water down there, and there's like a couple pools and like a muddy pool, and then there's like a little path that goes north along the side of the water. It looks oh, like. okay. There's some neat looking stones in the water too. All right, I'll, let's go check it out. Eldred, Kalander, anybody need a potato? I'm amazed you have oh, left. Potato. Paul, when I'm looking at this, um, is this still completely underground? Yes. Is that rock that goes around that pool something you can walk on? Is this something I can walk on, like over here? Yep. And to the north? Yep. Okay. It's kind of rounded a and a little narrow, but you'd, you'd probably just have to make a dexterity check. All right, we'll go that way. You know... Vivalda, that there the river goes behind the prison, and mm -hmm. this blue water there is, it's not a strong current, 
but the water is flowing from north to south very slowly. So okay. your guess is that this probably somehow has a connection to the river, whether it's just kind of coming off the river into the tunnel area and flowing down. Okay. And the brackish water you're guessing might be from when there was some flooding, if ever, and that because that's just what was left when the water receded. And Reed, when you're up there, you see up ahead that basically, and Vivaldi, you see this too, you can go to the left part of that V, to the left side of that great big boulder, or to the right, there's a little path of a ledge that goes around and then goes into a tunnel that goes up that way. Just around the river bend. And you, Vivaldi, give me a perception check, please. And read you too. Okay. And you said I got to make a dex check too? Yeah. Okay. 18. Perception okay. 13. Okay. I got 13. Give me that dex check. 15. Dex, dex check was no problem. It's Vivalda who, when you're up around there right by the water, mm -hmm. you hear the sound of rushing water. You can hear it in the distance. It's a little muffled, but you definitely can tell it's running water. So you feel like you're probably close to the river. How high up is, like, the ceiling, the roof of this cave? Not not very. It's... Okay. Uh, because the water seems to... The top of the cave seems to then go down, and the water, it, like, meets the water. Okay. So you, you, you wouldn't be surprised if the entrance of this water was below the water level. You mentioned off to the right... There was a ledge that leads into a cave? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then this is like another tight squeeze. Yeah, it's not as tight as the other one. Gaius would probably, in the Grey Shadow, possibly even might have to turn sideways a few times here and there. The, uh, the other one, can Gaius, I... would have definitely had to do the whole thing almost sideways. Can I, like, examine around to see if anything looks more um, man-made? Like, this is a path, this is a designated tunnel, like... Do people intend for people to go on this ledge more or through this? Sure, give me a survival part? check with advantage. That's going to be unnatural 20. Okay. Up here where you are right now, you can tell that this is not part of the regular tunnels. You don't even see really any foot traffic around where you are right now. You see like maybe long ago there was someone who might have come up here a little bit or a couple people. But with the rest of the tunnels, the rest of the tunnels, it was obvious. There's periodic foot traffic through here fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. This is an area where people don't go. Like, it's not part of the traffic of the tunnels. So, up ahead, I don't think that these are very traveled. I don't know if they're actually part of the tunnels or not. But they do head north, and that is where we need to go. So, what do you guys think? Eldred says, I forget who said it to us, but they did say that the entrance is not part of the regular tunnels because you wouldn't have That's a normal right. tunnel going in and out of a prison because they'd be sealed up but quick if that was a, you know, people could just come and go as they pleased. It would be a pretty pissed poor sense. prison. Shall we follow the river then along this ledge since the river does go behind the colon colonnade? I think we should. It's where we gotta go. Okay. I think. I think we need to. Okay, so you're gonna to go to the right and follow the ledge around the river. That looks like the non-traveled path, right? As looks well like as the, the one to plan. the left. As well as the one to the left. So you're gonna to go to thank the you right. Thank you for having that, Eldred. Would you like a potato? No, thank you. I'll I'll take a rain check. I only got like three left, so. You enjoy. <laughs> I I am full from the potatoes we had. Are you going to go? I look, by at, I, I look at Toad and then I look at my potatoes. And I'm like, no. And then I go, I, I offer one to the gray shadow. <laughs> okay. So you're going to go the ledge or the tunnel to the right or to the left? Let's try the ledge. To the right. The ledge? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. wide is the ledge? There are some places where you'll have to turn sideways a little bit, but. It's not precarious, okay? I'll have you make a dexterity check if you go that way, but basically it's just don't roll a one. 
So is that the way you're going? Yeah. I, I think Viv looks at everybody like, is this okay with everyone? And if they all say yes, then sh yeah, she'll head that way. Okay, everyone, everyone give me a dexterity check, please. E. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> we got close, but we did it. We did it. <laughs> I have to do it this way. Oh! oh! How'd you do hey, that, Bud Trumpet? Um, I, I rolled a 20 and added the modifier that I have for it. Okay. I'm dexterous, bitches. Toad slipped a little bit but didn't fall in. But he definitely had the worst part of it. You go and you go around the ledge to where the water kind of curves around and goes to where the water, the, the cave comes down. But around some of the stones, there is an entrance to another passageway. Duck in. Okay, it goes down a little mm. bit, weaves around. It's a little tight, but even, you know, Gaius just occasionally has to turn sideways. And you're kind of, it, it's, you're going for a little ways. Calandra, does a 15 hit you? Yeah. Okay, does a 14 hit you? Yeah. Does a 10 hit you? No. Remember hey. two, Calandra. All right. Small victories. Reed, does a uh, 17 hit you? Yeah. Does a 15 hit you? Yeah. Does a 13 hit you? No. Remember three. Butt Trumpet, does a 15 hit you? Yep. Does an eight hit you? No. Does a 10 hit you? Yeah. Okay, remember two. You know, only two of them hit me, right? Okay. It means because so there was right. stuff above that that I just didn't okay. ask. A Viv, a 15. That just hits. Uh, two for you, remember. Something's going to make me drop my potatoes in the water. Okay, so. Some of he has a lot. <laughs> everyone take <laughs> eight points of damage. Whee! And Reed take an additional four points of damage. Because all of you got hit twice, except Reed, who got hit three times. Out of the darkness, whirs, you hear the whistling of things that hit you, and it feels like little spikes that hit you. And all of a sudden, you hear a chittering, and you hear a skittering all amongst the rocks. Vivalda, give me a perception check, please. <laughs> I cannot, uh, I cannot see. Okay. <laughs> Natural one. Reed, you give me a perception check too. Perception. I get to reroll. I get to reroll. Much better. 18. You see these things, they're different sizes, but they, they're kind of like a cobalt blue with dark red underbelly. They look like a cross between a dog, a lizard, and a spider. They've got yeah. six, like, spider-like legs that the ends are almost like large blades. They have a long neck with this weird mouth that the, the mouth just opens up really wide. And they've got these teeth. And it's almost like there's a six smile. And this long tongue that comes out. And they have this long tail and there's all this, like, really bug-like black hair coming off, like, a, along their spine, along the back of their head, in, like, the equivalent of, of their leg joints. And they have all, a bunch of these things have fired spikes at you that have hit you. And from, you hear them from kind of... What are they? Where are these spikes coming from? <laughs> it looks like they're winging they them with their tails. Yeah. Ugh. Nope. Okay, and they're starting <laughs> to skitter towards you, and that is where we're going to end it for this evening. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. The same grognard time, same grognard channel. We ask that be kind.